Hey BioSix students, this short video is going to show you how to use a uh, visible light spectrophotometer. This is a Ward's visible light spectrophotometer. It's the same kind of spectrophotometer we would have used in our laboratory. And let me take you through the parts of it. Now what um, a spectrophotometer does, again, is it measures the either the absorbance of light by solute particles or it measures the transmittance of light by uh, solute particles. So. The first thing you need to know about a spectrophotometer is you got to have a place to put the samples. This right here is a sliding spec cuvette holder. It holds four spectrophotometer cuvettes. I don't know if you can see right there, there's a little output for the radiation. The light is going to beam through um, the spec cuvettes and the detector is going to be over here and it's going to pick up basically the amount of light that gets transmitted through the, the solution. Uh, they're designed to hold two mil plastic cuvettes. Here's one right here. You notice this plastic cuvette actually has, let me see if I can show it here to you, a little arrow. You see that arrow right there? That arrow is an orientation marker. It tells you the arrow goes in towards where the light is going to be coming from. So the light is gonna come out of that um, emitter, pass through the uh, cuvette, and then the amount of light passing through is going to get picked up by a detector on this side and it holds four, so we can actually put in four samples. Here I've got some um, spec cubettes with various concentrations of potassium permanganate. So again, we're gonna put them in that arrow facing forward. And if you look, you can actually push this holder in and out. So now the spec cubette number two is in position, spec number three is in position, and cubette number four is in position. And then I can pull it all the way out. Um, you can see here that I even put a little drawing here. The blank goes in the top and then the various samples can go in the next three. Um, to be honest with you though, if you're running more than three samples, you can take them all out. And as long as you don't re-blank the machine, you can keep reading them. So that's our sliding spec holder. Really fancy spectrophotometers will have one that's actually driven by hydraulic motors. But you know, um, we don't need to have that fancy of a spectrophotometer here. All right, to read, you're gonna shut the lid. And let's take a look at the controls. The first thing you can see here is a wavelength control. This is just a simple dial. Again, fancier specs will have a digital system, but you can dial it to whatever wavelength you want. Maybe we wanna dial it to around 565. That's about the absorbance wavelength for potassium permanganate. And we do a few experiments with that, um, that solute particle. And then over here, we have the actual controls. Right here, it's gonna be the mode. Now this mode, you're either gonna to wanna to have on A or T. A stands for absorbance. So the detector is basically going to calculate how much light is absorbed by the solution in the cuvette. You can also put it on transmittance and the detector is basically going to calculate how much light gets transmitted through the cuvette. So hopefully you've realized that T and A are related to one another because they're basically the inverse of one another. Don't worry about C or F. C will calculate concentration. I can honestly not remember what the heck F does, um, but we don't ever use it in our class. The other button we're gonna be concerned about is this one right here. This is the blank button. It will basically set the machine to 0% absorbance or 100% transmittance. So if you make sure that your sample holder is all the way out and that the cubet is in the B or blank position, you can press this button and it'll go BLA and you want it to blink. I always say, if it's not blinking, it's not blanking. And there we go. And then all you have to do now is just push the holder in. So watch how I push this holder in once and I get a reading. I don't have to do anything but push the holder in and copy down the numbers. There you go. And there's another sample. By the way, if you ever get negative readings, it's because your sample does not have enough uh, solutes to absorb the light. So in other words, you're getting 100% transmittance and that shows up as a negative value when you're under the A.